Good morning subscribers and I just want to bring you what will probably be my final video with regard to financial markets and the whole notion of regulation, uh, systemic risk, contagion and today I want to look at and consider with you quite briefly because it is quite a small aspect of the OCR specification so we're going to consider the role of the central bank as a lender of last resort. Now, as I have done in previous videos, uh, I've been doing a little bit of research into this and reading around it, certainly much more so than you'll find in your textbook. And if you go to my Twitter feed, you'll find on the Twitter feed there is a link to a document from which I have gleaned quite a lot of the information which I'm about to tell you. Not too much here today, so it shouldn't be too long a video. But go to my Twitter feed, scroll down, and you'll find uh, a link there to a PDF file which is quite a big research document into the role of central banks as a lender of last resort. Okay, so what do we mean by lender of last resort? I am just going to quote really from this document that I've been reading, not from the textbook. So, acting as the lender of last, last resort, LOLR for short, involves making commitments to lend in order to stave off a uh, certain systemic distress. So in other words, it's a form of liquidity insurance. It's a, a, you know, a dread to use the word backstop in this instance, but it is a, you know, it's a backstop for the banking system. And if all else fails, the safety net, if you will, is there in the form of the central bank, which will come along and scoop up the bank, uh, which is struggling uh, in its role as a lender of last resort. Now, of course, that does bring some benefits. And what are those benefits? Well, number one, there is less likely to be a run on the bank. So you know what a bank run is, I'm sure. We are very familiar here in the Northeast with a bank run because, of course, that's what happened to the Northern Rock when under the stewardship of Adam Applegarth back in the uh, late noughties when the financial crash erupted in Northumberland Street in Newcastle, people were queuing round the block multiple times because they were so worried about whether or not they would get their deposits from the bank. And of course, that is what we refer to as a bank run. Well, if people, customers, you and I, know that the central bank is there and the central bank will, in effect, basically guarantee the deposits which are within the bank, then there is less likelihood, although people would still be worried and concerned, but there's less likelihood that people will go in their droves to their local branches and start withdrawing their funds. So that's uh, advantage, uh, benefit number one. Number two, if, however, a run does take place, well, the provision of liquidity by the central bank reduces the need for a forced sale of assets that would depress values, cause insolvencies, and knock the economy into an inferior growth path. I'll just read that again, there's quite a lot there. Reduces the need for a forced sale of assets that would depress values, cause insolvencies, and knock the economy into an inferior growth path. Because, as you know, um, if there is a run on the bank, or a bank is in dire straits, financial trouble, then it could be the case that assets will have to be sold off in order to prop up the bank. And as you know, when you sell off anything, well, when you've got a, a fire sale of things, supply increases and the, the price and the values of them drop off. Um, it could be the case that um, businesses, particularly small and medium sized businesses, which are uh, obviously make up the majority of UK businesses in this country. Um, if it is the case that they are experiencing financial problems, then insolvencies are very likely. But if the bank is there in order to provide the liquidity and the credit, you know, it was, it was called, wasn't it, the credit crunch uh, in 2007, 2008, then there's less likelihood of that happening. So in other words, LOLR, Lend of Last Resort, reduces, number one, the probability, and number two, the impact of bank runs. And its main purpose is, again, if we sort of go back to, you know, two videos ago in this most recent series of uploads, it reduces 
the likelihood of contagion, and it, it co if you will, it contains contagion, if we could put it like that. But of course there are risks, and you'll be very familiar with the risks, I'm sure by now. The whole notion of moral hazard and adverse selection is a problem, um, because if, if uh, bankers, particularly commercial banks, retail banks, uh, are under the impression that the central bank will simply bail them out if they, when the going gets tough, then the managers and so on of those central banks and the retail banks have less inclination or less necessity to, to monitor the riskiness of the bank. And that, that can be quite undermining in the banking system. And then secondly, if money is so if money is created, new money is created to bail the banks out. Now you'll be familiar obviously with the whole notion of quantitative easing and so on. Um, not effectively printing money, but something along similar lines. But of course, if we think then of other uh, policy objectives of the of the government and the central bank, particularly with regard to inflation in the in the short to medium term, well, we do expect and anticipate in theory, although we haven't seen this recently, but that sort of creation of printing money and creating cash out of nowhere that can have implications for the medium to long term. Uh, inflation rates in the future. Now some people would argue that LOLR, Lender of Last Resort, should actually be abolished because that would then internalise the risks. We talk about in market failure, don't we? We talk about say carbon taxes and internalising the risk, putting the onus onto the producer or the supplier. Well again, well, if we abolish Lender of Last Resort then you're placing the onus back onto the managers in the retail banking sector to get their house in order and to start managing things more properly. And therefore they would have a greater incentive to manage their, the, the risk uh, more prudently. On the other hand, abolishing LOLR may exacerbate moral hazard because then that the sort of fire sale of assets would be much more likely because you would not then have that so-called backstop, if you will, of the central bank ready to step in and pick you up. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to leave it there. It, certainly if you're an OCR student, I would not expect or anticipate a, a, a significant question on this because, number one, it's a very small section of the textbook. Number two, if you look through the criteria, within excuse me within the specification you'll see that um, there is nothing there to say evaluate uh, the central bank as the lender of last resort however you might get a smaller question on it so i hope that's been of use and that's it for today bye for now